having been in this market for damn near 50 years, I've come to tolerate it for what it is. I do believe that a sea change is coming in the gold price, which is not something I've believed in for a long time. Join Rick Rule again, a renowned investor and commodities expert, as he takes you on a journey of discovery and opportunity in the world of precious metals and commodities. In this captivating video, Rick explains how gold reflects fear, silver expresses greed, and uranium offers easy money. Learn from a master as he shares his insights and tips on how to succeed in these markets, based on his 40 years of experience and analysis. Discover the secrets of these valuable assets with Rick Rule's wisdom and guidance. Uh, the U.S. government owes $33 trillion on balance sheet, admittedly. Uh, only $26 trillion, only $26 trillion, after the Fed's own balance sheet, which is to say after quantitative easing or more properly counterfeiting. Yes. Uh, but a bigger problem is the off-balance sheet liabilities, the net present value of entitlements, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, which is to say old, fat, bald guys like me. Uh, that number in the United States exceeds $120 trillion yep. by the estimates of the Congressional Budget Office, which is to say our government is much more li uh, illiquid and much more encumbered now than in 2008. So the ability to afford fiscal stimulus is much lower. Uh, so I'm afraid of a crisis in confidence sparking a credit con uh, a credit crisis, sp sponsoring a liquidity crisis without the government's ability to uh, spend, print, and borrow our way out of it. Do I know this is going to happen? No. Do I think it's going to happen? Unfortunately, I actually do think it's going to happen. I think that there is a probability rather than a possibility that we will have a credit-inspired liquidity crunch at some point in time. We're going to get through it. A bear market doesn't destroy wealth. Uh, if the price of a house falls in half, the value of the house doesn't change. But the ownership changes. Right. Uh, it goes from weak, stupid hands to strong, smart hands. Now, the weak, stupid hands don't like that a bit, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it's going to be up to your listeners which camp they inhabit, the weak, right. stupid camp <laughs> or the strong, smart camp. And unfortunately, more people will inhabit the stupid, weak camp, and they will be very resentful. The, uh, the delta between... Uh, a commodity and commodity stocks that are hated like uranium was two years ago. And the absence of hate is the easy money in extractive industries in commodities, uh, in capital intensive cyclical businesses, you buy stuff when it isn't just out of favor, but rather when it's hated. Uh, and that's gone with regards to uranium. It's ironic that three years ago, people like me in the uranium industry were vilified <laughs> And now Biden wants to subsidize uh, the uranium industry on a global basis was spending about $60 a pound fully loaded. If you include tax, cost of capital and prior year write downs, and they were selling the stuff for 30 bucks a pound, they were losing 30 bucks a pound and trying to make it up on volume being miners. Now, either the price went up to the point $60 where the industry returned its cost of capital, or else there wasn't going to be any uranium, the lights would go out. What do you think is most likely? I mean, that was a no-brainer. <laughs> now the price of uranium is $75. But much more importantly, the volume in the uranium market has changed from the spot market, which is to say where there's no price certainty overnight, to the term market, where both producers and consumers can lock in prices for as long as 15 years. Uh, that means that some of the consumers don't have to worry as much about price around supply and price shocks. And it means that the producers, if they're prudent, uh, can lock in floor volumes and understand at least what their top line number is going to be as far out as 15 years. The investors haven't recognized that yet. The easy money was made with the absence of hate. The real money now comes because there's a structure in the uranium business that is solid enough that you can increase the size of your business by 50% while locking in your margins two. Uh, as that flows through, 
the income statements and the balance sheets of the uranium companies. Uh, and the narrative gets extended to the generalist investors, the generalist investors will come into a space and there is not enough market cap in the space to hold their money. That'll be the blow-off phase, <laughs> which is to say after the solution has already been solved and after the pricing levels have risen to the prices where they don't need to go higher, the market will be invaded by the morons uh, and the market will go substantially higher. It has always been thus and it will be thus again. Having been in this market for damn near 50 years, I've come to tolerate it for what it is. I do believe that a sea change is coming in the gold price, which is not something I've believed in for a long time. Uh, I also need to tell you that I own gold now. I began buying gold about the year 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, a financial planner would look at me and say, you're the largest shareholder of Sprott. Uh, a brand name for precious metals. You don't need to own gold. If the gold price goes up, you're going to do stupidly well over there. But I own gold anyway, because it allows me to sleep nights and stay calm. I didn't buy gold because I thought the gold price was going to go up. I had other speculations. I got, I bought gold as insurance. I bought it as good liquidity. And when people say to me, well, the gold price has gone nowhere. Uh, when is the gold price going to go up? I say, well, uh, I bought gold for $255, $260 an ounce in 2000. It's almost $2,000 now. So when you ask me when the gold price is going to go up, I have to say to you, the year 2000. Uh, I mean, you've seen, what, a sevenfold, eightfold increase in the price of gold, and somebody's asking me when it's going to go up? <laughs> That's funny. I don't own gold because I might. I think it might go from $1,950 an ounce to $2,100 an ounce. I don't care about that. That's absolutely irrelevant to me. For that kind of money, I'd rather stick in banking, a business I know. I buy gold because I'm afraid that because of quantitative easing and debt and deficits and negative real interest rates, uh, that the price of gold measured in nominal terms, which is to say US dollar terms, goes to $6,000 or $7,000 or $8,000. And by the way, I'm not looking forward to that. The set of circumstances that would cause the gold price to go to $8,000 would be very hard on the rest of my lifestyle, which is really good. If you think about gold as insurance, you understand its true function. Do you want to collect on life insurance? Housing insurance means that your house got burned down or somebody broke into it. That's the way I regard my gold. Right. My gold stocks are different. They're businesses. And the way they have been run for 50 years, they're pretty lousy businesses. They were run on the lessons that the industry learned in the 1970s. In other words, they are built to capitalize on the leverage of the gold price rather than to be efficient. It's interesting to note, Sean, and this is horrific. Uh, in the period 2000 to 2010, a wonderful run of the gold price where it went from 250 bucks to 1800 bucks or something like that. Mm -hmm. The free cash flow per share of the Philadelphia Gold and Silver Index, the XAU, free cash flow per share fell. And the financial performance of the industry deteriorated over seven years because the industry was structured around the leverage of higher gold prices rather than around corporate efficiency. The industry is now tarred with that brush. The investment community assumes that these guys are at best morons or at worst thieves. But the reality has changed. Uh, the investors who own gold shares are demanding corporate performance. The specifically the manager, the managers that uh, delivered that sterling performance uh, have been allowed to pursue other employment opportunities, selling cars or whatever it is that they want to do. Uh, so the industry is in better shape, frankly, now than it was then. The industry has other challenges, but the other thing is that the industry is no longer priced for perfection. It was common to see gold mining companies priced at 1.8 to two times the net present value of their future cash flows at the then prevailing commodity prices. You're seeing them now produced at, now pardon me, priced at 0.8 or 0.9 times the net present value of the future cash flows at today's gold prices. And I think gold prices go up. Uh, when does this happen? I have no earthly idea. Uh, I really, really, really don't. But it is relatively simple for me to find six senior gold mining companies that I think are reasonably priced using objective measures 
and stupidly priced if, unfortunately, I'm right about the direction of the gold price. And I agree with you. The industry is hated. And I love that. Silver moves further and it moves faster. But that happens in the middle of the market. And the market hasn't started yet. Right. This is probably a good time for speculators to focus on silver stocks because they have no competition. Uh, you know, Warren Buffett famously said, you know, buy straw hats in winter. Well, in terms of the silver equity, man, you are in the winter. Uh, people who were discouraged by the collapse of the mini boom in 2020, 2021, the Reddit boom in silver, uh, regard silver, uh, perhaps because they're poor spellers, as a four-letter word. Uh, there is nothing I like as a speculator so much as an asset class that has disappointed the faithful. We thank you for letting us dive into the dynamic world of precious metals and commodities with Rick Rule. Examine gold, silver, and uranium from the perspective of emotions and markets. With exclusive insights and strategies, take advantage of the investment potential these assets provide. Watch for more valuable insight and analysis from Rick Rule in the future, so you can navigate the ever-changing landscape of wealth creation. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel and hit the super bell icon for more valuable content for you.